Hello friends, in this video we are going to see about common topics discussed in postnatal case presentation. First we focus on the mother related questions. The first question is what is the postpartum period? The postpartum period otherwise called as postnatal period begins soon after the childbirth and it is typically considered to last for 6 weeks or 42 days. This period is otherwise called as purpurium or postnatal period or postpartum period that is from childbirth to 6 weeks after childbirth. What are the 5 C's for delivery? C indicate clean that is clean hands, clean surfaces which includes clean perineum and clean cord care which includes clean blades and clean cord ties and clean cord stump. So these are the five essential C for conducting the delivery or five cleans for delivery. Then about the number of postnatal visits, we recommend minimum of four postnatal visits that is on 1, 3, 7 and 42 days after the delivery and once a month till 6 months and once in 2 or 3 months till 1 year of child CH. But at least postnatal visits should be on these 4 days that is 1, 3, 7 and 42 days after delivery. What are the complications of postpartum period? Purpural sepsis that is the infection of genital tract within 3 weeks after delivery will be considered as purpural sepsis. Thrombophlebitis which is the infection of veins of the legs for which mobilization prevents the occurrence of this thrombophlebitis. Then the third important complication is postpartum hemorrhage which can be divided into primary and secondary. Primary is with within 24 hours and secondary is more than 24 hours up to 6 weeks will be considered as secondary postpartum hemorrhage. The most common cause for this primary postpartum hemorrhage will be bleeding and the most common cause for the secondary postpartum hemorrhage will be infections. Then the next important complication during the postpartum period is urinary tract infection, mastitis and postpartum stress disorders. Based on the complications of this postpartum period, the danger signs of the mother during postpartum can be presented like this. So, the first danger sign will be excessive bleeding, presence of fever, foul smelling, low care, vaginal discharge, burning micturation, pain and swelling of breasts, convulsions, cough tenderness, lower abdominal pain, headache and convulsions. All these danger signs will identify the complications of the postpartum period that will be purpural sepsis, thrombophlebitis, postpartum hemorrhage, urinary tract infection, mastitis and postpartum stress disorders. Now when we mention about postpartum stress disorders, these are the common postpartum stress disorders that is baby blues, minor depression and major postpartum disorder, postpartum psychosis. The symptoms, onset, level of important, time course, assessment are presented here. That is in baby blues, there will be anxiety about the infant and parenting. The mother will be teary, overwhelmed, fluctuation of both positive and negative moods will be there. On the other hand, in minor depression, similar symptoms of major depression but with less symptoms and less impairment will be present. On the other hand, in major postpartum disorder, low mood with severe anxiety, they will be feeling overwhelmed, possible panic attacks, hopelessness and suicidal thoughts will be present. Then in postpartum psychosis, there will be anxiety, they will be labile, low or elevated mood, preoccupied, disastrous delusions and hallucinations will be present in postpartum psychosis. Psychosis. The onset of baby blues will be within 10 days of postpartum. The onset of minor depression will start in, during the early postpartum period. The major postpartum disorder starts within 4 weeks postpartum and the postpartum psychosis starts acutely and it progresses. It has a rapid onset within first few days to 2 to 3 weeks of postpartum period. The level of impairment will be fluctuating in baby blues. There will be some good days and mood not necessarily low all the day. In minor depression, the level of impairment, they will be able to function but with more effort. On the other hand, the major postpartum disorder, they will be feeling low most of the time for most days. In postpartum psychosis, the level of impairment will be rapidly deteriorated and it is a psychiatric emergency. The time course in baby blues, it usually improves over the first few months and in minor depression, it lasts for at least two weeks all the day and for major PPD, incidence rises within 30 days and can last for months or years and in postpartum psychosis, it varies. So, the assessment for these postpartum stress disorders are given here. You can pass and you can read it out. Then the most common question is, what is lochia? Lochia is the vaginal discharge that occurs after the
will work. It consists of blood, mucus and uterine tissue that is usually shedded as the uterus heals. So there are three stages of this lochia that is stage 1, 2 and 3 that is lochia rubra, lochia serosa, lochia alba respectively. Lochia rubra occurs in the first 2 to 5 days after delivery and flow is heavy. It is bright red in color, sometimes dark red or reddish brown in color. Discharge contains predominantly blood, mucus, blood clots and uterine tissue. In stage 2 that is lochia serosa which occurs from 4 to 10 days after delivery, the flow will be moderate. The color of the secretion will be pink or brown. The blood will reduce. It will be more watery. It contains more of mucus and there will be less to no blood clots. And in stage 3 which is lochia alba which occurs around 2 weeks and can last up to 6 weeks after the delivery, there will be very light flow or clotting. The discharge will be white, yellow or yellowish white in color. There will not be any clots and it is mainly made of white blood cells. That is lochia alba. So there are three stages, lochia rubra, lochia serosa and lochia alba. Now, what is the calorie and protein requirement during the postpartum period? We have to divide the postpartum period into first six months and the next six months. During the first six months, the mother needs 600 kilocalories in excess of their calorie requirement based on their physical activity and body mass index. In the next six months, they need 520 kilocalories extra over their normal requirement. When it comes to the protein requirements in grams per day, during the first six months, they need 17 grams over their normal requirement and in the next six months, they need 13 grams of protein above the normal required amount of protein. Then what are the diet advices you provide to the postnatal mother? First, we need to advise on the calorie intake that they should increase it by consuming at least extra two meals per day. Then while consuming the meals, they should consume more proteins in the form of pulses, dal, milk, egg and if they are taking non-vegetarian, we can encourage that also. On the other hand, they should increase the iron intake also. They can take iron rich foods such as ragi, red meats, fruits, green leafy vegetables. Then we need to advise on the increase in calcium intake which can be achieved by increased milk, curd and ragi intake. We also need to address any food fats and taboos present because these food taboos and fats will be implemented mostly during this postnatal period. We need to advise the mother to drink plenty of water. We need to provide with some nutritional supplements. They should continue the iron and folic acid supplementation that is 100 milligram of elemental iron for 100 days in the postpartum period. And they need to continue the calcium which is 1000 milligram or 1 gram daily for 6 months after delivery. We need to advise on the preferred family planning devices after delivery. That is, we need to understand the fact that although lactation confers some protection, it cannot be depended fully on. So, we need to advise some contraceptives immediately after the postpartum period, which does not affect the lactation also. In that case, we need to advise on IUDs, that is intrauterine devices and non-hormonal contraceptives should be the choice during the first six months following delivery. The pills should be avoided till the first six months as it can suppress or influence on the lactation. So, when the postpartum IUDs can be inserted. It can be inserted within 10 minutes of delivery of the placenta. It can be inserted during the LSCS after the removal of placenta within 48 hours of delivery after 6 weeks of postpartum period. Then we need to understand about the involution pattern of the uterus. So immediately after the delivery, the uterus will be at the level of umbilicus. Then it will return to the pelvis by 2 weeks. Then it will return to the normal size by 6 weeks. The descending pattern will be 1 to 2 centimeters per day. So sometimes there may be the failure of involution which can be due to cesarean section, postpartum hemorrhage, uterine infection, retained products, fibroids, twin or multiple pregnancy, maternal diabetes mellitus, polyhydromnias, all can cause failure of involution of uterus. So we need to understand about the breast milk. So the daily output of breast milk will be ranging between 450 to 650 ml daily. It will attain its maximum output at 2th or 6th month that will be about 730 ml per day. The breast milk contains 1.1 gram of protein and 70 kilocalorie per 100 ml of breast milk. And also we need to understand the difference between colostrum and breast milk. Basically, colostrum is the first form of breast milk produced by female mammals after the childbirth. Breast milk is the nutritious fluid produced by the mammary glands of the mammal in order to feed the newborn and it continues once this colostrum stops. Color will be yellowish in colostrum and whitish in breast milk. The colostrum is rich in protein, immunoglobulin, lactoferrin and other growth factors. Breast milk is rich in proteins, micronutrients, cholesterol, 
sugar, stem cells and other hormones. When it comes to the thickness, colostrum is more thicker than breast milk. And about the generating volume, colostrum is smaller in amount, breast milk is larger in amount. Colostrum contains less sugar, whereas breast milk contains high amount of sugar. When it comes to fat, colostrum contains less fat when compared to the breast milk. We move on to exclusive breastfeeding. It is the feeding of the infant only through the breast milk. From his or her mother or a wet nurse are expressed breast milk and no other liquids or solids except for ORS solutions that is oral rehydration solution. Drops or syrups consisting of vitamins, mineral supplements or medicines and this should be continued for a period of 6 months. So that is considered as exclusive breastfeeding. It must be initiated within 1 hour of her birth and it includes night feeding and on demand feeding. Then we need to understand about the differences between fore milk and hind milk. Fore milk is secreted at the start of the feeding. Hind milk is secreted in the later phase of the feeding. Fore milk is thin and hind milk is thick. Fore milk is less in volume. Hind milk is more in volume. Fore milk contains less fats, retinol, tocopherol, but fore milk contains more protein and fore milk has less energy when compared to the hind milk. Basically, fore milk is for the baby's thirst. It contains more water and it has high lactose and protein and it is not high in calories and it does not contain fat. Whereas the hind milk is thick and creamy, high in fat and it is found near the end of the pumping or nursing session. Basically, it is to withstand the hunger of the baby for a long time. We move on to breastfeeding, good position and attachment. So positioning in breastfeeding, so the baby's head and body should be in straight line. Baby's body turned towards the mother. Baby's nose at the level of the nipple. Baby and the mother's tummy touches with eye contact. Baby's whole body is supported. Whereas in attachment, baby's mouth should be wide open lower lip averted, baby's chin should touch the breast, areola should be more visible in upper part of the mouth. We move on to the expressed breast milk, that is breast milk storage gate. We know the difference between the fresh milk and the thawed milk. Fresh milk can be stored up to 4 hours, whereas the thawed milk can be stored in room temperature for 1 to 2 hours only. Fresh milk can be stored up to 4 days, whereas the thawed milk can be stored up to 24 hours in fridge. In freezer compartment, fresh milk can be stored up to 6 months, whereas the thawed milk should not be refreezed we now move on to the rooming in. Keeping the baby's crib by the side of the mother's bed is called as rooming in. This arrangement gives the opportunity for the mother to know her baby. Mothers interested in breastfeeding usually find it as a better chance for success of breastfeeding while they are in rooming in. Rooming in also allays the fear of mother's mind that the baby is not misplaced in central nursery. It also builds up her self-confidence. We move on to weaning. Weaning is usually said to refer to the entire process during which the infant changes from full dependence on breast milk to complete independence from it. Approach or the process of gradually introducing complementary feeds comprising of carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, minerals in a serial manner over each week so that the infant receives approximate amount of adult diet in first year of age in semi-solid form. Gradually, we need to increase the food consistency and variety as the infant grows older, adapting to the infant's requirements and ab abilities. Increase the number of times the child is fed with complementary foods as the the child gets older. Feed a variety of nutrient-rich foods to ensure that all nutrient needs are met. So at the end of the first year, the child should be able to consume all the food which an adult can take but in the semi-solid form. We move on to kangaroo mother care. Kangaroo mother care is the care of preterm infants carried skin to skin with the mother. It is a powerful, easy to use method to promote the health and well-being of infants born preterm as well as full term. Its features includes early, continuous and prolonged skin to skin contact between the mother and the baby. It is initiated in the hospital and can be continued at the home. Small babies can be discharged early because of this kangaroo mother care. Mothers at home require adequate support and follow-up. It is a gentle, effective method that avoids the agitation routinely experienced in busy wards with preterm infants. So this is the kangaroo mother care where we have a supportive environment all over where we have the community, family, staff and the healthcare facility. So where the healthcare facility focus on positioning and nutrition. The family focus on all these things after the discharge and follow-up. So it should satisfy all five human sense that is through skin touch, skin contact, through ears hearing, through eyes vision, through tongue, through nose. So this is the positioning for kangaroo mother care where the baby is placed in the mother's breast in upright position chest to chest. Secure him with the binder. The head turned to one side in a slightly extended position. The top of the binder is just under the baby's ear. This is slightly 
fully extended head position keeps the airway open and allows eye to eye contact between the mother and baby. Avoid forward flexion and hyper extension of the head. The hips should be flexed and extended in the frog position. The arms should also be flexed. So that is the kangaroo mother care position. What are all the benefits of kangaroo mother care? The baby gets warm. It gains physiological stability. The minimum risk of apnea. Reduced risk of nasocomial infection. Quiet sleep. Facilitates cognitive development and early growth promotion. When it comes to the mother, mother will be active while taking care. Relaxed, confident and empowered. There will be bonding with the baby. Satisfaction of the motherhood. Successful breastfeeding. When it comes to the family, there will be a better follow-up. Return to daily course early. Bonding will be present between the mother, baby and the family. There will be better follow-up. Reduced cost. All are the benefits of Tangaru Mother Care. We move on to Baby Friendly Hospital Initiatives under which we have 10 steps to successful breastfeeding. So every facility providing maternity services and care of the newborn should follow the following 10 steps in order to make them as baby friendly hospital initiative centers. So they have to have a written breastfeeding policy and it should be routinely communicated to all healthcare staff. Training should happen for all healthcare staffs and there should be information to all pregnant women about the benefits and management of breastfeeding. The hospital should help the mothers initiate the breastfeeding within one hour of childbirth and it should show the mothers how to breastfeed and how to maintain lactation even if they are separated from their infants and give the infants no food or drink other than breast milk unless medically indicated. Practice rooming in, allow mothers and infants to remain together 24 hours a day encourage breastfeeding on demand, give no pacifiers or artificial nipples to the breastfeeding infants, foster the establishment of breastfeeding support groups and refer mothers to them on discharge from hospital or the birth center. So these are the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding under baby friendly hospital initiative. We move on to the newborn related questions. Usually the anthropometric measurements such as birth weight, height and head circumference will be according to WHO, the normal birth weight should be more than 2.5 kg. So any child with less than 2.5 kg will be considered as low birth weight. The average length of the baby will be 47 to 53 centimeter. So you can make it as 50 centimeter and the growth pattern will be after one year, the length of the baby will be 75 centimeter. At two year, it will be 87.5 and uh, three year, it will be around 95 and around four and a half years, the child will be 100 centimeter. So that is the normal growth pattern of the length or height of the baby. When it comes to the head circumference, it should be 35 centimeter at birth and at one year it will be 45 centimeter, two year it will be 48 centimeters, three year it will be 49 and so on and by the end of fifth year the child will reach the adult size of 52 centimeter of head circumference. Then who are all the at risk infants? The birth weight less than 2.5 kg infants, twins, birth order of 5 or more, artificial feeding, weight below 70% of the expected weight that is second and third degree of malnutrition, failure to gain weight during three successive months, children with protein energy malnutrition and diarrhea, working mother or one parent will be considered as at risk infant. Then we should know about the APGAR scoring system. A stands for appearance, P stands for pulse, G stands for grimace, A stands for activity and R stands for respiration. Under each criteria, we score from 0 to 2 that is 0, 1 and 2 based on the different responses. And from there, we can score 0 to 3 APGAR score as severely depressed, 4 to 6 as moderately depressed, 7 to 10 as excellent condition. So these are the parameters for each point. So we need to remember the criteria and the scoring system. We need to understand about the low birth weight classification that is any child with birth weight less than 2500 grams or 2.5 kg will be considered as low birth weight. Here we can divide the low birth weight babies based on the weight into very low birth weight for 1 kg to 1.5 kg and extremely low birth weight for less than 1 kg. When the baby is home we can call it as small for dead baby babies or small for gestational age babies. We need to understand the danger signs in the newborn. So that will be higher temperature, hypothermia that is temperature below 36.5 degrees centigrade, con presence of convulsions, presence of chest in drawing, pus or redness in the umbilicus, abdominal tenderness, inability to feed or lethargic, fast breathing, yellow discoloration over palms and soles, poor sucking and feeding, all will be considered as a danger signs in newborn. We need to know about the new ballot scoring that is the criteria to assess 
causes the prematurity. It is used to measure the gestational age. Preterm is defined as a baby is born alive before 37 weeks of pregnancy. There are subcategories of preterm babies based on the gestational age that is extremely preterm less than 28 weeks, very preterm 28 to 32 weeks, moderate to late preterm that is 32 to 37 weeks. So here are some of the maturity parameters in new ballot scoring that is the physical maturity consists of the following parameters. Based on this we have a maturity rating and the scores will be like this. From there we can calculate the gestational age in weeks. We move on to the prevention of hypothermia in newborn. Keep the baby warm. Immediate drying should be done. Covering the head. Skin to skin contact. Skin to skin care that is kangaroo mother care. Delaying the first bath. Rooming in and bedding in can prevent hypothermia in newborn. What do you mean by essential newborn care? It is the immediate care at birth that is delayed cord clamping, thorough drying, assessment of breathing, skin to skin contact, early initiation of breastfeeding all will be considered as essential newborn care. Thermal care or cord care, resuscitation when needed, support for breastfeeding should be provided, nurturing care, infection prevention, assessment of health problems, recognition and response to danger signs, timely and safe referral when needed should be provided as the essential care for the newborns. Then we need to understand about the immunization of the newborn. At birth, the following vaccines need to be given that is BCG, Hepatitis B birth dose and OPV zero dose. For BCG, the maximum age will be one year of age and the dose will be 0 0.05 ml or less than one month. The root of administration is intradermal and it is in the upper arm left side. For Hepatitis B birth dose can be given up to 24 hours. It is 0 0.5 ml intramuscular given in the anterolateral side of the mid thigh left side. OPV zero dose can be given up to 15 days of birth. Two drops is the dose. Orally, it will be given. So these are the three vaccines which are given immediately after the birth. We end up this presentation with current statistics of India and Tamil Nadu. So we need to know about the infant mortality rate of Tamil Nadu that is 13 in Tamil Nadu. Overall India it is 28. The lowest infant mortality rate is present in Kerala that is 6. Whereas the highest mortality rate is present in Madhya Pradesh 48. The neonatal mortality rate that is the mortality rate within 28 days of birth in India it is 20. Tamil Nadu it is 9. Lowest is in Kerala 4 and highest is in Madhya Pradesh 31. Early neonatal mortality rate that is within one week of delivery that is 15 in India, 6 in Tamil Nadu, the lowest is in Kerala 4 and Madhya Pradesh it is 23. Perinatal mortality rate that is after completion of 28 weeks of gestational age and within one week of delivery that is 18 in India and 8 in Tamil Nadu, the lowest is in Delhi that is 6, highest is in Odisha that is 30. Under 5 mortality rate for India it is 32, for Tamil Nadu it is 13, lowest is in Kerala 8 and maximum is in Madhya Pradesh 51. The birth rate and death rate also need to be remembered. India's birth rate currently it is 19.5 and Tamil Nadu it is 13.8. Highest is for Uttar Pradesh, lowest is for Kerala. Death rate is 6, Tamil Nadu it is 6.1. Highest is present in Chhattisgarh, lowest is present in Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Ladakh. For sex ratio for India is 907, for Tamil Nadu it is 917. Maximum is for Kerala 974 and lowest is for Uttarakhand 844. So these are the key statistics which you should remember for postnatal care. Thanks for watching this video.